So as you can see behind me, there's fresh snow on the mountains. I am super excited to be out shooting today and hopefully there's enough foliage left to get some great shots. We had quite a windstorm last night and uh, it rained where I was camping, but on the high elevation areas, there's fresh snow, my favorite thing. Well, Southwest Colorado did not disappoint. With snow on the peaks and some delicious fall foliage, I ate up every minute in Southwest Colorado that I could. From Chimney Rock to the Million Dollar Highway, the scenery was just stunning. And sometimes, even when the light isn't there, you just have to soak in the scenery. So as you can see, not everything is beautiful sunset, but the scenery is still beautiful even though the light is pretty poor today. Just overcast and cloudy and gray. But I thought I'd share a little bit around my trip. I'm shooting this on my phone, so hopefully the quality isn't too bad. The journey continues. Camping in Southwest Colorado is a treat. Because it was late in the year, Many of the Forest Service campgrounds were closed, so I opted for one of my favorite state park campgrounds where I knew I could do laundry, have great views, and internet so that I could load apps back onto my replacement phone. I'm joining you from a campground in East Tennessee. Originally, this was recorded in Colorado. However, that video had some issues, so I'm going to have to re-record it here but hopefully it'll have the same type of content and be just as interesting as the first batch. When you last saw me, I was headed out of Crested Butte and I had just said goodbye to Gina. Well, Gina had a safe trip home and is now off on yet another adventure. We did have a little chat about the comments we saw after we talked about some of the issues that we ran into. And we wanted to make sure that you understood that we didn't consider them really big issues at all and they really aren't a reflection on New Camp or even the pump manufacturer. Let's talk about the water pump first. There are thousands of the SureFlow pumps put in boats and RVs every year, and every once in a while you just get a bad pump. It's really not the end of the world. Gina had tested the pump and it worked when it left the factory, so you can hardly fault New Camp with that. And SureFlow is a great brand of water pump. I've seen it used in the Overland community, in boats and RVs. Just once in a while you get a bad pump, so not a big deal at all. And Gina had such a terrific attitude about it, it really made it a non-issue. As far as Gina's propane goes, I don't think it was as much a stove problem as it was just an overall propane issue. I've talked to camp hosts before who say when people make a big transition from a lower elevation to a high, higher elevation, they see difficulties with propane sometimes. I don't understand the science behind it, but it does somewhat make sense to me. After Gina ran her Aldi for a bit, her stove did light up, and that was above 8,500 feet in elevation. 
So I don't want you to think that we were laden with problems. I mean, me breaking my cell phone... <laughs> me breaking my cell phone was my fault. It wasn't the cell phone manufacturer's fault. And I was able to get it replaced. So it, it was more just to give you an idea that you're going to experience challenges. I mean, these things bounce down some pretty rough roads. Things are going to come loose. Um, just like your home, you're going to have to do maintenance and repair. Just part of living an RV life if you're going to travel quite a bit. This week I'm going to talk about how long my fresh water and my gray tank and my cassette toilet are lasting and where my propane usage is at. But before I get into that, if this content is helpful or if you're enjoying it, would you be sure to give me a thumbs up on the button below and also subscribe if you haven't already done that. I really appreciate it and it's a big help to me. I love traveling this time of year. The foliage is amazing. The crowds are usually lower. And even this year, I was starting to see some more normal crowds compared to last year. I also love that the temperatures are cooler. I really don't enjoy hot, humid weather. So these cooler, drier temperatures are phenomenal. Now this year, I have seen more rain than usual in Colorado, which is great. They really need the rain. I stopped at Blue Mesa Reservoir, if you know where that is, in western Colorado, and it was the lowest I've ever seen it by far. Now, I was really alarmed when I saw that, but the good news is I found out that it is drained not because of drought in Colorado. And yes, they are having drought in Colorado, but it's not as bad as it's been, but it's been drained to send more water downstream to Lake Powell to help with the low water situation there. They've had a bit more of a dry summer. So there was some relief, it's good news and bad news, but um, it is still pretty dry, but not nearly as dry as it was last year. However, since I arrived in Ridgeway, it snowed on the mountain peaks just about every night. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna leave a day early because a big weather system is expected. And this weather system is supposed to bring very cold temperatures, about 20 degrees snow into the lower high elevations. It's uh, not just on the peaks, but actually where I'm camping. And even more than that, it's going to bring some high winds. And I really don't care to drive in high winds. I have driven in high winds and the tab tows like a champ, I got to tell you. Um, I've never felt the need to have sway bars on my tab 320. And I've driven in very high winds through South Dakota um, through two or three days of it a couple years ago. Why I don't like driving is it just makes you more tired. Even if you're driving your Jeep, it makes you more tired. And secondly, it's a real drain on your gas mileage. Now, I mentioned temperatures are gonna get around 20 degrees. That's lower than I will camp without winterizing typically. I don't like to go below, much below 28, truthfully, if it's gonna stay cold. Um, that being said, I have camped around 28 degrees several nights and have had no problems. The only issue we ran into is when we connected to city water, that city water hose froze. But the pipes inside were fine. I've had no issues. Of course, the by the book answer is if you're going to be camping below freezing, you should winterize. I personally don't. This is, this is where if you're willing to assume a little bit of risk, you can camp, I would say, 28 or so safely as long as you get your Aldi going. Now, I will give the caveat that when it's 28 during the night, it's getting up to the high 50s or low 60s, even 70s during the day. So it's not staying below freezing. Even the day that my water hose froze, it thawed on its own within an hour after the sun was up. So you have to know what the conditions are gonna be like over a little longer period. The other thing to consider, about whether to winterize or not winterize is are you going to be driving? Because if you're gonna be driving, you can't keep the tab warm. Um, so I go ahead and winterize if it's gonna stay below 28 degrees. Everybody has a different comfort level for how cold they'll camp without winterizing. I'd love to hear what other people do. 28 is sort of my soft rule, I'll say. I have gone lower. In my old tab, I could camp when it was colder, to be honest, because the freshwater tank was inside. So I didn't have that plumbing exposed. I just would leave the bathroom door open and the bottom cabinet where the freshwater tank was so that it had lots of heat. With that stuff outside, I do prefer to be a little more cautious. What about you? How cold will you camp before you winterize? Let me know in the comments below the video.
Ridgeway State Park is really one of my favorite places to camp. I'm camped at the Elk Ridge Loop, which has electric sites. I do have a water hydrant very close to my site that I can reach with a hose. Can't leave the hose connected, but I can refill if necessary. I have a site that's very close to the bathroom, so I'm able to split that up if I want to. And the reason I like being close to the bathroom is because Ridgeway has some really nice laundry facilities and it makes it easy to do laundry. This particular site, you can tell, is equipped for tents. It's got a nice tent pad, which I'm not using, but a nice paved patio area with a picnic table, fire ring, barbecue, and then actually it's pull through. So it's very easy for me to pull right in. I didn't have to do much to level it. When it comes time to take it down, all I have to do is back in, hook it up, and I'll be on my way. So let me give you a little update on how long my water tank, my gray tank, my cassette toilet, and my propane are lasting. As far as the fresh water tank, I can get just about a week on one fresh water tank if I'm fairly judicious, and that's with showering every other day. I use the water somewhat to flush with, um, and then I'll use it to wash dishes and shower, and that's pretty much it. I have other drinking water that I use. Gray tank will last just about the same amount of time. That's the nice thing of having your gray tank be the same capacity as your freshwater tank. You don't have to wonder how much space is left in the tank. Now the tank monitors do help, I will say that. I didn't have those on my old tab and I'm really enjoying the tank monitors. But I can go just about a week with both fresh and gray water. As far as the cassette toilet goes, I'll be honest, that really varies on how much I have to go to the bathroom. So I have found that, especially if I can use the campground bathroom a little bit, I can go several days. Um, but typically, I rather empty it sooner than later. So I'll empty it every three or four days, usually. Even when I'm boondocking and using the Aldi for both heat and hot water often and cooking with it, I can usually get about two weeks with a propane tank. Now, if I'm using electric sites, I can go a really long time. As a matter of fact, I have the same propane tank in there right now. It hasn't been refilled since I filled it at the beginning of this camping season. I'm going to say I filled it around May or June. So I've been using the same tank, and I think I have plenty of tank left. I have to repair. I actually picked up a little Bluetooth monitoring system so I can tell how much propane I have. And I'll put a link to that in the description below the video. But I have to repair it because I had broken my phone and I haven't gotten around to repairing it yet. But I can tell I still have plenty of propane. Um, and I've only been using it for cooking here because I'm hooked up at electric. With two people, you're likely to go through your water faster than me. But with one person, I'm able to get about a week out of it. I will say the Nautilus makes it super easy to refill from a water bottle. And I have a video that shows you how to do that. It actually uses the pump and sort of siphons it out of the freshwater container. No more lifting a five gallon heavy water container and trying to pour it into a gravity fill. It does it automatically. It's awesome. I've, I've seen some people express concern about the battery that's used for that, but it, it really isn't that much. And it's well worth the battery power that you use to fill it than having to lift that tank. You know, on my original video, I had said at the time I recorded it that I hadn't seen another tab the entire time I was here. But as soon as I stopped filming that video and got in my car to leave the campground, I came across some folks from the tab group. And they lived up in Montrose. They have a tab 400. They just got it this year. And they shared they hadn't had a single issue with it. So this goes out to all the people who say, there are so many issues. Well, of course, you're going to see issues in... Facebook groups because that's where people go to problem solve. So many people have no issues whatsoever. But they lived up in Montrose and they were there so I had a nice conversation with them and it's always great to meet other tab owners. I also saw another 400 along the highway I-40 and it was near Oklahoma City actually. Not, it was just before you get to Oklahoma City. So I've seen a couple other tabs but not as many as usual I don't know why that is I did see one Cirrus truck camper along the way but um, I may see more the trip is young I did meet a couple at a state park along the way that had friends who were t tab owners so I know you're out there but it did get me thinking I see a lot of different RVs really big RVs in a lot of cases at RV parks campgrounds and even boondocking sites 
And I've never once thought, boy, I wish I had that RV instead of my tab. I still, after all these thousands of miles, love my tab. Um, enough, obviously, that I bought a second one. But I am so thankful for how easy it is to tow, how easy it is to get into a site. And just honestly, let's be honest, how cute they are. They're just still fun to look at after... I've had a tab now since 2014, seven years. So after seven years, I still find them cute to look at. So one of the last things I did, I did some laundry while I was at Ridgeway. And one of the other things I did is give the tab a good thorough cleaning inside. And um, I vacuumed it out and pulled all the rugs out, gave them a good shake and wiped things down. I like to use the Lysol wipes just to wipe things down the walls and even the cushions, to be honest with you. I have ultra leather cushions, so wipe everything down. Got it cleaned, then I attacked my Jeep. Now, Gina lived through my disastrous Jeep. I had not organized it before I left because I thought when I get to Cleveland, I'll have time to pull everything out and reorganize. Well, it rained, and I didn't get to pull everything out. So I was living with things somewhat in chaos. It made me crazy. It was really nice to get things a little, little more organized, so now the chaos at least has some organization to it. I did stop somewhere and wash it, and I will show that to you in a future video, but um, keeping your tab clean while you're on the road is one of the things you just have to do if you're going to be gone for a few weeks. I use a Dyson 12 volt hand vac and it's for cars, but it works great in the tab. Um, and truthfully, I use it to clean up the dirt, but I also use it to suck bugs that manage to get in. If I leave, a, you know, people talk, how, how come the bugs get in? Well, usually the bugs are getting in in most cases because you have a light on inside and you open the door. It's really that simple. If you've got a newer tab, they have this nice little fuzz and people call it bug fuzz, but it's installed around the window to help minimize how much can get in. And those screens do a pretty good job. I'm not gonna say that occasionally those itsy bitsy no seams can't get in because they can, but most of the time it's because you've got a door open even for just a second with lights on inside. If you wanna keep the bugs out, just turn the lights off before you go inside. In case you're wondering, Rocky has been having a splendid time. He loved it when Gina was here because Gina gave him a ton more attention. So he got double the attention and he loves the exploration. We played Frisbee with him probably for hours between the two of us. Um, he loves the fresh air. He loves just to look and smell everything that goes on at a campground or a boondocking site. And he does great when we travel. I have a little seat for him. It's called a Snoozer Lookout 2. I'll put a link in the description below. But that sits on my passenger seat. It could go in the back seat too. When Nina's with me, we put it in the back. And it seat, the seat seat belts in. And then there's a strap that goes around the seat belt and hooks into a... He wears a harness when we travel. Hooks into his harness so he's secured as well. He really prefers to be in that seat and harnessed in versus being on someone's lap. He feels more secure and he sleeps pretty much the entire time we're in the car. He's an excellent traveler and he does great at campgrounds, so we've had a good trip. So, it's on to my next destination. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Leaving Southwest Colorado is always a sad affair, but knowing that there were new adventures to be had, I plugged my next destination into Waze, and away I went.